Hello everyone and welcome back to the Genshin Impact Prelude series. As I've said before, this is a series all about the backstories of the playable characters in Genshin Impact. I will only be going into the stories on the character pages, so there may be potential story spoilers for some characters. This also means I won't be going to the manga or story unless their adventures are mentioned in their character stories. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, today's video is all about Zing Shou, so sit back and relax as I read you his stories. Every merchant in Liyue Harbor knows of Zing Shou from the Feiyun Commerce Guild. All see him as a kind and well-mannered young man who is an excellent student, a top talent in every sense. As the second-born son of the family, Zing Shou is not required to solder the burden of managing the guild's affairs. However, Zing Shou possesses a unique scholarly talent among his peers, that is, the offspring of Liyue's wealthiest merchants, and was often praised by his tutors as a young student. Zing Shou's eldest brother, while he was learning the family business from their father, firmly believed that Zing Shou would become a great asset to the business one day. However, little did he know that Zing Shou, after finishing the dauntingly thick volumes on commerce and philosophy, would hollow them out and sneak martial art novels into them, which he read incessantly thereafter. Sometimes, Zing Shou suddenly disappears for hours at a time with no explanation. When asked why, he simply replies, a moment of solitude. To Zing Shou, a moment of solitude can mean all sorts of things. Examples include visiting Wan Wen Book House to pursue the latest novels, and going to Hei Yu Tea House to sample Yun Jin's latest drink. Sometimes it means that he is off to fight for justice in the name of chivalry. Defeating bandits on the road, driving away monsters, helping distressed children by fetching their kites from the treetops. There are all manners of responsibilities that fall into the category of chivalry. Inspired by tropes from his beloved martial arts novels, such as the king who wears a disguise and mingles with the common folk, Zing Shou does not hesitate to leverage the power of the Feiyun Commerce Guild to resolve more complex issues when violence isn't the answer. One day, Zing Shou's older brother came looking for him, only to find he wasn't around. When Zing Shou later returned, he came across his brother in the hallway, your room was a mess, so I cleaned it up. Listen, both you and I are responsible for the reputation of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. We have to act the part. If you can't clean up a room, how will you clean up the world? An adeptus once said. After half an hour of lecturing, Zing Shou was finally let go, but his brother said something strange at the end. I'll not enter your room without permission next time. I'll make sure the maids do the same. Zing Shou had no idea what he was talking about. However, as his brother turned away, with a despondent look on his face, he muttered to himself, Those books under his bed. No. No, I shouldn't go looking at what kind of books they are. Zing Shou is growing up, after all. Don't want to be lecturing him all the time. Puberty, perhaps? Afterwards, even Zing Shou found it odd. Expecting that one of the maids would have something to say about the stash of martial arts novels under his bed, he had long since prepared his response. But in the end, no one ever bothered to check his room again. To keep Zing Shou from spending his whole day at Wanwen Bookhouse at Feiyun Slope, his father agreed to let him learn martial arts training from the Guhua clan. Much to his dismay, Zing Shou quickly discovered that Guhua was a dying art that had been in constant decline for years. There was no proper tuition, and it turned out that the luxury Jojo he had signed up in didn't even belong to the clan. They had just rented it temporarily to keep up appearances. Zing Shou's father was, of course, aware of the state of affairs in advance. To him, the whole thing was just for fun. He thought Zing Shou would be content to learn a spot of blade work for show, not for serious self-defense. He hadn't counted on the prodigiously intelligent and extremely well-read Zing Shou being as outstanding a talent in Guhua as he was in every other discipline he had turned his hand to. A combination of his own intuition and extensive knowledge of ancient literature meant he was able to completely revitalize the dead art. Zing Shou was disappointed by Guhua's martial artist program in the beginning, but he found the other tricks they taught to be exactly what he hoped for. Quick lime, smoking sand, paper fish, sword swallowing, fire breathing. Zing Shou was spoiled for choice. He decided on the spot that he would learn them all, no matter how long it will take him. 
He reasoned that they would be useful to have repertoire during his future exploits as a chivalrous hero. There are two sides to the swashbuckling Zing Shou's personality. While quiet and unassuming in front of strangers, he is gregarious and chatty in the company of close friends and family. Though more restrained than his elder brother, he even has a playful and mischievous side. The one who usually bears the brunt of the, his bizarre sense of humor is someone named Chang Yun, an exorcist usually found on one of the forest trails around Liwei. Chang Yun, I found a haunted house for you to practice in. Chang Yun, you have to believe me, it wasn't me who laid traps inside the house. What? It's not haunted? Well, I uh, couldn't have known that, could I? Chang Yun, don't glare at me like that. Look, you're injured, you better lie there and get some rest. Tell you what, Chang Yun, we have a maid who learned the art of essential oil therapy in a nobleman's house in Sumeru. How about I ask her to tend to your wounds? You owe me for this, though. The notion of chivalry means different things to different people. Chivalry means listening to your conscience calling you to action when you see injustice, right? Or is chivalry simply knowing right from wrong? No, that's not enough. It must have something to do with being a righteous person. To Zingshou, chivalry simply means be good and do good. As a son of a wealthy merchant in Liyue Harbor, he was born to ride the waves in the world of trade. Notions of chivalry should have gradually left him as he grew up. However, obtaining a vision changed everything. It meant he was finally able to accomplish those legendary deeds he could only dream of as a child. Of course, there is no way he can completely divest himself of his duties in the guild, but so long as he gets to go out and be the hero even occasionally, he is perfectly content with his life. The only thing that can wipe the smile from Xingxiu's face is when cynics question the true motives of chivalrous heroes. Rank, reputation, reward, shadowy deals, Whenever Xing Shou hears people smearing the names of true heroes, the expression on his face may not change, but he will be sure to add that person to the special section of his blacklist, reserved for people he despises even more than carrots. Xing Shou once wrote a martial arts novel named A Legend of Sword, based on his own experiences, intending to publish it in Liyue Harbor. To his surprise, his manuscript was rejected by local publishing houses, who believed that no one would have any interest in a story with a setting as wildly unrealistic as the plot is banal. Undeterred, Xingxiu had a few copies printed privately and sneakily placed them on the shelves of Wanwen Bookstore during one of his many trips there. But just as the publishers had suspected, it failed to garner much interest from readers. This was quite a blow to Xingxiu's confidence. Unbeknownst to him, however, a passing merchant from Inazuma did indeed purchase a copy to bring home, where it received rave reviews. Writers from the region over attempted to copy the success of A Legend of Sword, but none succeeded. It maintains a permanent residency in the number one bestseller spot to this day. The martial arts school known as the Guhua clan has been in decline for several hundred years now. In its heyday, the name of the clan rang like steel throughout the harbor. It is said that the clan harbored three great secret arts. The ways of the Light Piercer for polearms, Rain Cutter for swords, and Life Ender for those who excelled in both. The three arts would be refined over the generations, and with time, would reach their apex. Yet the clan's strength would continue to wane, leading to them losing their influence. The three arts became diamonds in the rough, quietly awaiting a successor. After many years, the Guhua clan would finally get one in Xingxiu. It was he who successfully grasped the ancient martial principle after merely four years of study. The Guhua weapon arts stress using the weapon as an extension of your body, and indeed this is a common idea amongst the various schools of martial arts in Liyue. But the way Xingxiu saw it, the basis of the polearm and sword was the use of a vision. Martial arts were meant to see a vision as an extension of themselves, and see their weapon as an extension of a vision. Hence, he says that, the arts of both the polearm and the sword are just the art of the eye. Having come to this epiphany, Xingxiu took up a quill and penned a verse on the martial principle. Reading it, the Guhua head was shaken with tears, declaring that it is not Xingxiu who needs the Guhua clan, but the Guhua clan that needs Xingxiu. Since then, this verse has been sealed up at the clan's headquarters at Wangshan Hall. Disciples are prescribed for reading it, much less outsiders. 
The verse reads thus, Guho's arts I have studied long, in its secrets I am now trained. Now its long lost depths fall upon me like the coming of blessed rain. The beating heart of Guho's sword art is a shower of floating flowers. One of mists may seize a bloom, but those without red only doom. The Guho lance is a lantern stance, like flames in night's deep glooming. Like sparks they scatter with ease in the dark, then join like the daybreak looming. They say the art is as your arm. I say its glint is the beholder's eye, a light like the bright dawn coming. Those who wander are burdened not. Freely they cut the rain, and enlightened they pierce light. Like a snaking dragon, they cannot be subdued. In their right eye the blade, and in the other the spear. This text should have been free for all to read. The only reason why it was sealed is the dreadful handwriting. And those are all of Zing Shou's stories. He may not have a big role in the story so far, but his story quest is quite enjoyable, and you should check it out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all in the next video.